Well, it's good to be coming off a couple of days here that we got a break. Um, I'm feeling fresh legs myself, so I'm sure the players are too. Uh, we got to take advantage of that and uh, make sure that this preparation is really right on point. Um, I know you asked me, you know, we just played these guys a couple of weeks ago, and I did not feel like I did a good job in the preparation in the short week with our team. Um, and uh, last week was a really good week, and we need to come back and, and get a really good week again here so that we're right to play and we can, we can do the things we want to do. So that's, that's a main focus for me, and uh, I know our guys are, are looking forward to this. The thing you mentioned about the younger guys maybe not being as like ready for that game was, was that evident before the game or once you saw the game? No, I didn't. I didn't feel it until we got out there. You know, until we got close. There was some signs of some stuff, but um, you know, the first time you go through a really short week for young guys, uh, you know, you're giving them a break and you're, you're trying to help them out physically so that they don't. The game before doesn't factor into that, that Thursday night game and. and uh, so we make some some concessions, and uh, that means that you back off some. And not everybody handles that well. And I didn't, you know, I anticipated that we would get the similar response that we've gotten over the years, and we didn't get it. And so, uh, you know, it was just my bad. I made a mistake there. Bobby, Bobby Wagner was named man of the year, or the nominee for a man of the year for your team. It's a good choice. I mean, you've been around him for more than a decade. Just what, what have you seen him mean to the, the organization, the community, just everything he's been about? Yeah, he, he's, he's done everything that a guy could do for, the, I would think, for the criteria of this award. I mean, he's been everything. Um, he's a fantastic person. He's a terrific family guy. Um, he's got everything going forward for him football-wise. He's done everything he can do forever, and he's doing it again. And... Uh, and it's also recognized. The players know. They know who he is. They know where he's coming from. And he has an impact on them in, in numerous ways. And, and uh, he's doing everything he can. And so I don't know if that's enough for that criteria for the award, but uh, he's a great candidate. It's a little bit of a scheduling quirk that you play the Niners so close together. Is there a benefit in film study or just being so aware of tackling needed against McCaffrey or, or any benefit to how that well they, they have the same benefit that we have you know in, in that so there's nobody has an edge um, but in you know introducing the new team this week you know it's a different introduction because you just played them we just went through all of that we have a, a great deal of information already logged and so uh, both teams are, you know are competing to figure that out how to use that right and so we'll um, you know we have our way we're going about it and I'm hoping that we'll uh, the, the preparation uh, can really go towards what we're doing and not have to be so concerned about learning the other team and all that kind of stuff. So we'll try to take advantage of that. What about what you guys were able to do offensively um, beyond just scoring 35 points? Do you hope carries into Sunday? Like what were you able to do offensively, excuse me, against Dallas? Yeah, there was um, – there's a lot of positives uh, in the game and, and, and uh, our ability to convert on third down, you could see. Look, look at the difference in the game. It was a fantastic start. I think we were nine for the first 11, which is, you know, great stuff and it allowed us to have long drives, sustaining uh, opportunities with the ball, um, all of those things. Um, so, and that, uh, that's a real positive for us. We, we, you know, we set our sights on you know, producing a, a really good outing that, that last week, and it, it showed up. And everything that we tried to get done basically got done. And so, um, you know, it's 143 left and, and uh, down by a touchdown, and you got to go. You know, it came right down to that. And uh, just like we did in the first half, you know, I, we expected to do that in the second half as well. And then we got stalled at third and two, you know, and, and fourth and two, and unfortunately. But... Uh, um, it was a fantastic game in a lot of ways, and a lot of respect to them. They're a really good team, and uh, we went nose to nose in a good way. I, I, I would say this: that um, we, al I, I must say, I allowed it, and, and the officiating was part of that game, and it made a big difference in the game. And it went both sides, both sides. There was a lot of calls and a lot of things that, that you know that you look at, and uh, I need to make sure that that isn't the factor in the game. We don't need that to be the factor. We got to clean our stuff up so that isn't the issue where calls can be made, you know, that they can change the game because defensively the game gets marred a little bit I mean, because of the first downs that were made, you know, by penalty and stuff. And, and uh, uh, we were playing better than that. And, and we should have been able to receive that, the rewards of that, but yeah, we gave them too much. And so, uh, um, so there's stuff to be done. How do you? In what way do you do that? <coughs> a, a, a bunch of ways. There's a, with individual guys and, and uh, uh, by situations and all that. Uh, we try to be, you know, a step a step ahead, uh, you know, 
anticipating when they don't move the football, when you ask, you know, when they're supposed to move the football, I could have done better with that time frame that was in there. You know, I can do better. And I'm arguing about the movement of the placement of the ball, you know, on a field goal opportunity, and, and, and I lost a, you know, lost the time there. I didn't lose it. I just didn't take advantage of it properly. And so stuff like that, you know, we, we can all do better. How was uh, Abe Lucas feeling? He felt, he felt pretty good. I just talked to him about it. He felt pretty good about it, kind of as expected, um, a little sore, but the, the break was perfect for him, you know, to get a couple of days, and so he's, he's ready to go. What impact did having him back have on he looked good. He, he played strong football. He did a nice job. Um, he's rusty in some stuff, and, and uh, totally understandably. Um, but it's good to have him back. It, just, it felt good to have him out there pushing the piles and knocking people around, and, and uh, he'll just get better. You know, he just needed the play time. Where do you feel like the defense is right now? I mean, October you had some really good statistical stretches. It's maybe it not as good numbers-wise the last few games, but... You feel like that's indicative of where you guys are. Well, um, you know, we have to be better because you know we we gave up way too many points the last two weeks in in particular, and, and uh, um, but again we we made enough plays like in this past game to play a, a nice football game if we didn't give them first downs, you know, and so we have to we have to see if we can't get right back. And we're matching up with really, really powerful uh, offenses. You know, we we kind of went toe to toe with Dallas last week. Didn't get that done uh, the week before, and um, so I, I think we're we're rounding into it. I think we can have a great finish. We have a this is the fourth quarter of the season is now on, and we'll see how we do and see if we can get a great push um, in a number of ways. This break gave us a little time to do a little mini buy kind of stuff and, and research and stuff. We think we found a couple things we want to try to emphasize, and so we'll. we'll uh, we're encouraged by the fact that we can. We think we can hang, and we can do a nice job with our D. Some of the penalties. Is it some of the stuff? Like, are you guys able to do stuff in some games? Like, uh, that's then later in other games, getting called for illegal contact or DPI. Like, you yes. So, yeah. Some in the, in certain games, crews are more sensitive to stuff than others. You know, and, and uh, um, Dallas, in particular, as an offense, had had drawn the most. Pass coverage penalties, and they did it again. You know that, that's we knew it. We went into it knowing that, and and uh, what, for whatever reason that happens, it's an unusual stat. But uh, you know that was the case, and they, that that stayed true. And we didn't, we weren't able to return it, turn that, even though we knew it was it could happen. You know, so you know I don't know I don't know who else knew that, but it was a factor. What did you make of the tackling in that game? Well, there were some incredible open field tackles in the game, some, some of our best of the season. And uh, with guys on swing routes and tons of field and all kinds of space and all of that, I thought that, was, that stood out. There's still some numbers uh, of tackles that we can make better. We were taking shots. We were very aggressive, and, and uh, we went for it on, on some plays, which we encourage guys to go for it and count on the pursuit to make the play, which happened a number of times. And, and uh, so... But it's a it's a point of emphasis, and it's a point of emphasis again this week because this team is such a, a great you know catch and run team. Um, so we, we got to keep getting better. Well, what's the teaching point with Daryl Taylor on the near sack where Dak flips <clears throat> out of the um, Well. <laughs> he he just has to finish it you know he, he thought the play was over is that's that's we can't get to that point you got to make sure the play is over you know and he, he thought he had the guy and thought it was done and he, and relax for a moment um, you know some real intricacies about that whole situation that that um, was he in the grasp is he not in the grasp are they going to protect the quarterback or they not you know that those kinds of things but he needs to finish the just finish the tackle and get the guy to the ground when it comes to Debo Samuel he's certainly versatile but what's the challenge of just identifying where he's lined up on the field um we know them well enough. It's not a challenge. It's just it's just getting him on the ground. You know, I mean, he he does stuff from his different spots. Uh, they they trust and believe in him. Um, you know, to carry the ball as a running back as well as all of the perimeter stuff that they like to do with him. To, to where you they put you in positions of open field tackling opportunities that he's he's really good at. And uh, so it's that's it's not the challenge. It's getting him on the ground is really the challenge. It's not knowing where he is. What's the Kenneth Walker and Jordan Brooks? <laughs> any updates on them? Um, Kenny ran around pretty good in walkthrough. Yeah, it was exciting to see him out there moving around. He was flying around. Um, we got to make sure we get him through the week and see what happens. We don't know. We don't know. Jordan can't do anything yet. What did uh, Zach Jordan it? Um, he was out there moving around today, so that's a really good sign. Again, he had a bruised knee. You know, he did not have a knee injury, and so um, it's, it's uncomfortable, uh, and, and it's going to hurt like crazy if he lands on it again. You know, during this week of preparation and all. But uh, by the end of the week, he should have a chance to be pretty good. Do you have any more clarity on the type of sprain it is for Jordan and the severity? Yes. 
I do. Uh, it's a medial sprain. That, that's that, the easiest way to just say it. It's a medial sprain, so it's not a high ankle sprain. DK mentioned uh, that he's been taking sign language classes, and he said he can kind of use that to express himself on the field, maybe without getting flagged. So what, what are kind of your thoughts on, I guess, the fact that he's kind of doing that, taking those classes and using it that way? I think it demonstrates a, you know, a diverse way of communicating and, and looking at the world and, and uh, knowing how, you know, how everybody is so prone to be captured, you know, in, in your, what, what you express. Uh, it's a new way, and uh, I think it's very innovative. And, and until people start studying up and <laughs> figure out what the heck he's saying, he, he's going to be okay. So he's got some grace period in there, I think. Can uh, and Zach practice today? Um, I don't. Uh, we'll have to wait and see. Let's wait to see what happens after practice. We've got to see what happened on the walkthrough. I'm not sure about that yet. Uh, of all the things the Niners do, what's the most difficult aspect of preparing for them? Um, it, it is their. It is their uh, getting the ball in the guy's hands that can really make things happen. You know, they're really good at doing it. Uh, you know. Cal does a great job with McCaffrey in all ways, in, in the multiplicity of it. They really have identified his talents, and they're using him to the max. Same with Debo, and I think the same with George. I, I think they, you know, and Ayuk also. You know, they use their people really well, and uh, I think that they they maximize the 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 potential of their guys in, in a really consistent way. I think it's very impressive that they've been able to do that. The pre-snap motion, is that almost a distraction at times rather than indi indicative of the play that's about to come? A distraction to the offense or the defense? Um, that's the whole idea, yeah. They're, they're trying to give you the, the least amount of time possible to cite where they're coming from. And, uh, you know, the, the league is really blown up with, with the – the fast motions that, that occur in the last four or five years, you know, and, and it does give you the limited amount of time, the most limited amount of time to identify what's happening, what's coming. And so um, it, it's just to try to slow you down, you know, try to keep you from being at an edge. You just line up and you're standing in the same spot. At least you know that. And that, that's, that's old style. It's not happening much anymore. Is, is the coaching point to just – Hold your ground and wait till the play begins. No, <laughs> no, it's not. Quite, it's not quite that easy. We, um, yeah, you have to be aware of the influence of the, the change of, of the formation, because it can change where you fit and where you fit with the other guys. So, you have to be able to adapt. Part of it is is, is not over over adjusting. You know, you move too fast, too far. Um, that's that's one of the issues. But that's just one of them. <laughs> it's a it's a really good part of the game. It's a you know it's a dynamic part of offensive football that's just continues to be expanded. And, and uh, these guys are these guys happen to be really good at it. We are too. We do a lot of stuff, you know, and make it hard on our opponents. The whole idea is to slow down or, or lessen the time of evaluation, and, and also that it lessens the time to communicate. You know, where somebody has got to tell the other guy. You know, I you know I just got bumped. You know, and sometimes there's not enough time for that. Use some of your backs just kind of playing against Dallas deeper into the game, or if they're late third. Uh, was that a product of running it a little bit more, or just because the score was close? What was the very first thing you said? We really used to play passes and stuff. Oh yeah, yeah. Later in the game. That yeah, you know, it's a it's a part of our game we really like, and and uh, it was that we were we had given them enough of an effect, you know, in the running game. Um, so yeah, hopefully we'll continue to get that done. Devin Bush hadn't played much on defense for quite a while until. What did, what did you make of He jumped in and did all right. He did fine. Um, uh, he, he fit up well. He was comfortable. Um, played, you know, like coming off the bench, he played like a veteran, you know, knew, knowing what was going on. So it was, uh, it was good to see. Witherspoon had another bad ball going after the quarterback. What, what about him is that ability to both rush the passer, but when the ball, you know, time that up? <clears> yeah, I think it's just, it's just a, it's just one of the aspects of his awareness, you know, and to be able to figure out when that's the right thing. Because sometimes, sometimes you can look really bad. You take a leap and the guy ducks underneath you, you know. He seems to have a, a, a knack for waiting until the, just about the ball's thrown. So he's been accurate with it. He's been pretty effective. There's other things that, I mean, it's just one of the many things. He had a great open field tackle in this game. Uh, it just blew up to, to make the tackle that most guys would not have even attempted in that manner because they thought they might miss it, you know, so they get a little more cautious. He went for it. It's just he has a knack, you know, and, and that, I think that's what that is, Johnny. You saw him wait to the very last instance, and he ensured that the guy was throwing the football. And you know, I'm, we'll see what happens the next time. But he's he's been really effective at it, and it's just another one of the things that he shows you that he has a, a depth of awareness that's that's makes him special. 
Eskers and, uh, and uh, Dariq Young, where are they? Helping? They're both practicing today. Yeah, I, I, anxious to see those guys get out there and battle, and they're kind of competing now, you know, to, to see who's in the best shape and who's ready to go and all that. So it's a good thing. Well, one more on, on the motion. Are, does it seem like they do that, the late motion, less to try to decipher what def what, 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 what coverage it is and more so to confuse the defense? Yeah, well, if you guys, you know, share with your readers, well, watch how often there's two motions or two shifts. And it's one of them is for, you know, identifying, you know, what's going on, and the other one is to get to gain the advantage some. There's, there's information gathering that's happening uh, with the multiple shifts and, and that kind of stuff. And that's... Uh, you know, it's a really high-tech part of the game. It's a very cool part of the game. Quarterback has to make sense of it, but it also helps other guys. It helps receivers and helps the center know, identify who's, you know, who's blocking and stuff like that. And, and uh, so, the, in essence, the phrase we kind of use, they're trying to undress the defense, you know, with, their, with the motions and the, and the shifts and stuff like that to figure out what you're doing. And it's man and zone and it's pressures and all kinds of stuff, so. What have you thought of how uh, Jamal's played? It? And numerically, his pass rush numbers aren't quite as high as they were Kind of previously, I guess. Um, you know, his first yeah, he years. he he looked the best he's looked all year. Yeah, and and uh, he moved well. I, I talked to him about it, you know, and he came out of the game feeling better than you know he has, and so he's got a chance to work a little bit this week, more than he has had. He has not been able to practice regularly the whole you know throughout this time before, um, but he he looked the quickest. He looked light on his feet, and and uh, um, I was really happy for him to, that he could you know take a step forward. That's it's better than what he's looked. Be going back to the motion, when on offense, so if you've got two people that, that pre-snap motion, how much does that change each week to confuse the defense? Yeah, it changes all the time. Yeah, there's, it's just up to the, you know, the creative minds of the, of the offensive coaches and the coordinators and all that, that you know, to just devise another way. You know? and there's also, if watch, two, watch the tempos of the motions and the tempos of the shifts. You know, it tells you kind of whether they're gathering information or they're actually trying to use it in terms of the rhythm of the play. And there's a lot of stuff going on. It's, it's, uh, the game has become very intricate and, and as much by far the most it's ever been in the history of the game. And uh, it's a cool part of it. I think a lot of it probably blows right by the, the, the regular fans. You know, they don't, you know, they see guys move and they don't realize it, but there's intent with almost everything that happens. You know, there's an intent in there that the, the caller, the quarterback is trying to take advantage of it and, and, uh, and whoever else needs to see what, what's happening. So pretty, Derek, pretty cool. Uh, Derek Hall didn't play a whole lot against Dallas. Is he okay? That's, we just need to play more. He just needs to get in there more. He's doing, he's doing fine. No statement about that other than I wish he would have played more, you know, and I wish we would have got uh, Kenny Mack in there too, you know. I, I'm fortunate that we didn't get him uh, any runs in the game, but um, we'll try to get that done. Jamal had a couple things on social media over, over the weekend that drew some attention. Uh, I'm wondering if you were made aware of those and if you happened to Yeah, we've already addressed it uh, with him, and, uh, you know, I don't know if it was a great decision at the time. I'm not sure about the, the details of it, but I know that he realized that you know he needed to take it down what he put up, and so uh, we don't want to do we don't want to be part of that. The first matchup against the Niners didn't look like you guys used your heavy stuff on defense against their some of their heavy stuff, uh, but they <coughs> did against Dallas. It looked like uh, what was the You've been talking to our boy overseas, huh? <laughs> 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 uh, what was the reason for maybe doing it against Dallas, but then not so much against? It's just. Game plan, just game plan. You can play these guys right back to back, you know. So you, you do different things because of that. Had an impact, the, the going lighter against their heavier stuff against the Niners had an impact on some of the run stuff. I don't know. I don't know that. I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> I, I might know that, but I'm not going to tell you. Thank you. Okay. See ya.